Hi, I'm David Seldran, lifestyle host, global traveler, design enthusiast, and urbanist. Join me in my travels around the city as I visit some of the best designed and most livable residential developments in and around the metropolis. I'm on my way to check out Ayala Land Premier's Arbor Lanes, a new residential community in the eastern portion of Arca South, the emerging central business district developed by Ayala Land, where I've heard some of the best practices of urban design are taking place in the sprawling 74 hectare mixed use estate. Perhaps it's too early to tell what this large scale master plan development will look like when it's finally done, but the rows and rows of trees, the large sidewalks, and the many open spaces set aside for recreational parks give you a clue of what to expect. A livable and green, sustainable community right in the middle of the big city. On a secluded tree-lined street is Arbor Lanes, where I'll be spending most of the day getting a taste of what it's like to live in this intimate garden community. Wow, it's hard to believe I'm actually parked underground because of the amount of light and greenery that greets you every time you get out of the car, including mature trees. Residents can get to their units directly from the parking lot using dedicated lifts, but I love the idea that you can also access your units by walking through this open and communal garden. It's a great way to start and end the workday. And yes, even greet your neighbors along the way. As of now, three residential blocks are ready for occupancy. Pine, Fern, and Willow. With two more under construction. Arbor Lane's Olive and Arbor Lane's Jade. As you can tell from all their names, the green theme is taken seriously here. Indeed, lush greenery is the one feature you immediately notice as you approach the property. That and a generous amount of open space, natural light, and ventilation. Features often missing in other high-rise developments built too closely to one another. Here, however, everything feels airier, brighter, and best of all, healthier. Condominium life is often pictured as impersonal, like living amidst an anonymous crowd, but not here. Indeed, with only 12 units per floor, there's no crowd to worry about. And with so few neighbors, you're hardly anonymous at all. In fact, it encourages you to get to know each other better. And who knows, gather in common spaces such as this. Think of this garden terrace as an extension of your home. A place for meeting friends or entertaining guests. Or perhaps when the home feels a bit crowded as a sanctuary away from the family. Your choice of privacy or community just a few steps from your unit. I love it. Natural light and fresh air even within the corridors. It's a common feature throughout Arbor Lanes. It's the same feeling you get inside the apartment. Although this space doubles as the Arbor Lane showroom, it's a functional two-bedroom unit on the upper floor of the Arbor Lane Spine building. Oh wow, I just love open plan spaces, especially if the space opens up to the outdoors. No unnecessary walls or barriers to obstruct the view, the natural light, and of course the breeze, so that everything just feels lighter and healthier. And this, this is one of my favorite features of the unit. It's a good sized balcony, which can be used as either an extension of the living room or yes, why not? Your own private garden. And if you want a bit of privacy, check this out. You can retract these louvers without cutting off the natural light and the breeze. It's one of the many innovations of Arbor Lanes. 
These blinds don't just protect your home from the elements or from nosy neighbors. They're designed as well to add color, texture, and a unique style to the building's facade. A design element that gives Arbor Lanes a distinctive modern natural aesthetic. Another innovation is how the AC condensers are hidden away in a dedicated storage area. A clever way to eliminate the bulky eyesore while creating extra room for living space or a pocket garden on the balcony floor. To help me visualize what's possible, I've asked Justin Alonso, the owner of Shop Leaf Plant Studio, to show me how a typical balcony in Arbor Lanes can be converted into a picturesque and thriving garden. All right, let's go to some of the uh, tips, very basic tips that you give um, beginners who are starting their pocket gardens and tips for uh, indoor gardens like this one. Huh? Of course, assess your space, um, see what kind of light it's receiving every day because light is the most important part of um, plant or of yeah, even, human even humans, <laughs> even us. <laughs> and what about the rule on watering plants? Some people tend to overdo it. Um, yeah, actually, that's the number one cause of plant death, <laughs> sadly, overwatering. The, the easiest way to um, avoid that is to make sure before you water, you feel the soil. Just use your fingers, okay, uh, just stick it. Your finger inside. Yes, and then if it's still moist, don't water. And then, of course, just enjoy the plants. <laughs> plants are living things, and um, like people like plants, sometimes we get sick, right? So a brown spot on the leaf, or um, let's say a yellow leaf doesn't mean that the plant is dying. So, once you know how to care for your plants, the next step is turning your indoor garden into an interior design statement. For example, Justin picked planters and pots in neutral tones to highlight the green of the leaves and complement the natural color palette of the unit. What about the layout? Because you know, a lot of people tend to overdo it. Yes. It looks like a jungle in, in their balcony. Yeah, crowded. It kind of irritates the neighbors as well. Yes. The right mix is actually always what will look good um, for to you. To you, yeah. <laughs> Beauty in the eye of the beholder. Yes. Well, if that's true, then I think Justin's choice of plants, their varying heights and shapes, and how she arranged them, have created a lush and lovely view, which residents can enjoy from any point in the living room and kitchen. Justin, thank you so much for those tips for maintaining a healthy garden. And speaking of healthy, I've got a workout session scheduled at the gym below. But first, let me get dressed. Although it's possible to stay healthy with all the natural elements built into the residences, there's so much more to keep you feeling fit and fresh outdoors at Arbor Lanes. Wow, talk about maintaining a healthy lifestyle. It's almost impossible not to be active around here, especially with all these amenities just a few steps away from your unit. This is amazing. Sure, other condominiums offer gyms for their residents, but few are as large and as well-equipped as this one. And that's because fitness, and especially health, is at the core of Arbor Lanes. If, like me, you still need to be motivated to work out in a gym, then maybe this space, and especially this view of the garden outside, should do the trick. Wow, this is so cool. So, if you're new to a professional-grade gym environment, all this might seem overwhelming, even discouraging, which is why it helps to have a personal coach, a coach like Asha. Hi, Asha. Are you ready to share your tips with us today? Super ready. Let's okay. Asha Velasco is a personal trainer to many of the city's VIPs, from beginners to serious athletes, and to those in between like me. Regardless of one's level, however, she recommends some basic workout tips. Morning, noon, evening, what's the best time to exercise? Uh, I would be honest and say morning really is the best. It really sets the tone for the day, right? You feel confident, you feel like you're ready for, for the day itself, like for what's to come. How many minutes, how many hours is a good workout? I would, I would go anywhere from at least make it a minimum of 30 minutes. But if you do have 15 or 20, Maybe you want to just make it slightly challenging, you know, go for an interval or something like that. Something that would challenge you enough that you feel like, oh yeah, I just needed 15, 20 minutes of sweat. Working out of sweat? Well, that sounds easy in a place like Arbor Lanes, since Asha recommends mixing up your routine on the gym floor with running, swimming, and biking outdoors. 
Maybe some days you want to go just focus on cardio, and that's where you go out for a run, you know. I mean, you have a really nice area for, for all of that, the cycling, the running, um, and then head to the gym for some strength. So you can split it that way. So it really is a blank canvas if you think about it, right? And you have all the elements available right here. Yeah, you do, you do. Including three of the most useful pieces of gym equipment any trainer would need. A stationary bike, a treadmill, and a rowing machine. Asha says a routine covering the so-called three kings of the gym would be ideal. So let's try it. Start with alternating between walking and running on the treadmill for five minutes. On a curved treadmill, even better to make it more challenging. Next, hop on the rowing machine for another five minutes. Just make sure to row gently and not overdo it, as well as to keep your posture while seated at 11 to 1 o'clock to avoid back strain or injury. It's a full body workout. It's like legs, core, arms. And it's actually one of the safest machines I would recommend to anyone, really, from like, from 16 to 60, or I would say like 18 to 80, really. After rowing, get on the stationary bike for another five minutes. When done, start all over again, and again, and again, using intervals of five minutes on each machine till you reach 30 minutes in all. Once you get the hang of it, you can either increase the speed or extend the minutes. Keep this simple workout in mind and you'll be fit before you know it. I'd say with a gym like that, how can you not stay fit? In fact, it often seems like the entire neighborhood was built to encourage fitness. Like this, you've got pathways all over the place for walking, jogging, and especially biking. And I think that's my ride over there. Hey Brian, thanks for bringing an extra hey, bike for Hey, me. glad you could make it. Yeah, good to see you again. Good to see you as well. These are still bamboo bikes, but they're now e-bikes. What are what exactly are e-bikes? Yeah, so you know, electric bikes. It's basically got a built-in motor, so different ways of propulsion and much easier to get around. I first met Brian McLellan of BAM Bikes when he first introduced his locally designed and manufactured bicycles made out of native bamboo. Since then, his company has added locally assembled electric-powered bamboo bikes to their list. The one I'm using is what's called a pedal assist e-bike, where you still need to pedal to activate the electric motor. The other, the one with Brian, is called a throttle-only type, meaning it's equipped with a motor controlled by a throttle, like a motorcycle, except you can also pedal manually, and that it uses no carbon-emitting gas engine at all. I think it's the future of transportation because you get that extra boost, you get that confidence to go longer distance, and you're using renewable energy. So you it's, know it's you're like winning. a motorbike, but with, with without the without the dirty fuel. Without the dirty fuel and without the really big heavy bike, and you can park it and drive it like a normal bicycle. Almost all e-bikes on the market today are imported from overseas and use painted metal frames, creating a huge carbon footprint that's hard to avoid. Brian's, on the other hand, isn't just assembled by local craftsmen in Tarlac. Theirs use a native bamboo frame that's not only biodegradable, but also more durable. The benefits come from the material, and bamboo has grown to be really stiff in certain areas and flexible in others. So it's got this kind of composite matrix that allows it to be really durable and has built-in vibration dampening. So actually you get kind of a built-in shock absorption and it makes for a really smooth ride. A smooth ride is exactly what it feels like. All the more with an electric motor pushing you along on the wide and well-paved roads around arbor lanes. Indeed, to promote bicycle riding to, from, and within Arca South, the developer set aside dedicated bike lanes on the main thoroughfare with a strict speed limit on cars on all streets to keep bike riders safe. I'm told more measures are in place to make the neighborhood even more bike friendly. Personally, I mean, I have a car, I can have a driver, I can grab a grab, but at the end of the day, if I can jump on two wheels and go where I want and be in control of my time and not worry about traffic, I'm a much happier person for it. I must agree with Brian. 
and indeed with Asha, as well as Justin. To be a happier person is to have access to a lifestyle where health and wellness are a priority in a community dedicated to living sustainably.